Welcome to this online service. It's our custom to have a carol service the Sunday before Christmas. And this is the time for it. So we do some extra singing and worship and you're welcome to participate with us in worshiping the Lord. Yeah. 
As a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here's 
together. We thank you, O Lord, for this opportunity to think back tonight on this wonderful story about your coming to this world. Thank you. Thank you for shepherds, for lights, for angels, for eyes that were opened to recognize the coming of the Messiah. We thank you that this story is continuing today and that we can live in the reality of your visitation, of your coming to this earth. Help us to find ourselves in your story. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christmas is just around the corner and we will have uh, quite a few opportunities of live stream on Christmas Day. Um, you can just make sure about the times that it would be available. On Christmas, there's also a few in-person gatherings taking place in the teatro and in the piazza. There'll be some food available, music, and uh, we're looking forward to an opportunity just to spend some time together in the Christmas spirit, and you're welcome to register for that opportunity if you're interested. Christmas is a time of giving. God has given His only begotten Son for us. We give each other presents. We give to the work of the Lord. The QR codes are now available if you want to make a contribution. And a different and various digital methods of giving is also available on the page. Thank you. Today's scripture reading invites us to think about the kingdom of God, the rule of God, the world of God, and that is the life with God. And this life, this kingdom is brought to us by someone, a child, Jesus. And we see that Jesus is great. He has so many dimensions. And in this Advent time, we've looked at this vision that the prophet Isaiah gives us of the one who is coming, Jesus himself. He's given to us and he comes as this child named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And these names give us an idea of the characteristics of this kingdom. They are things that we desperately need in our world today. Wonder, counsel, might, strength, power, peace. And then today, what does it mean for us today that he brings us, gives us, shows us the everlasting Father? 
I think one of the greatest needs in our world today is that we, we have a picture or find a perspective of what, what eternity, what the everlasting is. And on the other hand, a picture, an idea, an example of what a father, the eternal, everlasting father is. And here Isaiah shares us this image, this good news that we do have a father, an everlasting father, not a temporary father. For many of us, this is a a problem, this is our pain, this is our hurt, that our temporary fathers let us down. But we have an everlasting father and he's good to me. He wants the best for me. He gives the best to me. He delights in me. And he has a desire that I share life with him and that he can share life with me. And so Jesus comes. Jesus is born so that I can find, experience and know the father. A child is born unto us so that we can have this unity, this relationship with the eternal father. And Jesus confirms this at the end of his life in his prayer to his father in John 17. And you can read along with me as it comes up on the screen. He prays that all of them may be one father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them, and even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, And see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. This is God's desire, that we will know him in this way. And it's, I am, I'm convinced that it is a deep desire in every one of us too. There's this wonderful verse in Ecclesiastes 3, and, and it's, it's one of my favorites, where the author says that God has placed eternity in the hearts of man and woman. God has placed in our hearts a desire for eternity, for God, for the divine. He's placed that there. And whether we recognize it or not, in the deepest place of our heart, there's a desire for our God, our everlasting Father. And so today, in the first place, this this idea, perspective, life of everlasting eternity, what does that look like? I remember as a young girl in church, I was terribly curious, and especially about eternity and what and heaven and what it means. And I always went up to the Sunday school tunnies and asked questions, how, what, where. And one day I, I upset what, one of these tunnies when she told us that um, one day in eternity in heaven, we would sing forever with the angels, holy, holy, holy. And I told her that I definitely do not want to go to heaven then. And when she asked in shock, but why not? I answered very honestly and brutally that it must be the most boring thing in the world to sing forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. (laughs) This innocence and ignorance, but there was something in me, in my heart, in this young girl longing for the everlasting. You see, you and I are eternal beings. We were created for eternity. And we grow up to live with this idea that my life only starts when I'm born and I live and I die and hopefully I will then go to eternity, heaven, the everlasting. But that's not how the Bible speaks of us. When I read scripture, I realize, but I am a living being with a soul, with a spirit. I am from God. I was with God and I will return to God. Look at Ephesians 1. Thus, even before the world was created, 
He chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless before Him. Before my birth in this world, I was with Him and He chose me. And when we get to know the everlasting Father, we are invited to get in touch with this dimension that that we lose touch with, our spirit. I'm spirit and soul. I am created in the image and the likeness of God who is spirit. There's a part of me that I cannot see. And yes, the Bible uses soul and spirit as alternating terms, but they're inextricably linked. And although we can distinguish them, we can't separate it. You can distinguish soul, spirit, body, but you can't separate them. There's a part of you, yes, that's visible, but there's also a part of you that's invisible. Many legends around the world are told to try and give us imagery for this reality. Cultures trying to find words to describe something of this, but I know that I know. I don't know exactly how it is, but this is true. Just for example, the Japanese, they live with this idea that when a child is born, his mother may not leave him alone for for a while at all because... He comes from a distant place. There's, a, there's an invisible part of his being. And now it's strange for him to be here in the visible. So he needs to be with his mom all the time so that she can help him, comfort him, and so that she can help him to adapt to his earthly existence. People from Norway have a legend. Your soul and spirit were kissed by God before you came here. And you have a vague memory of that eternal kiss and all the things in your life you relate now to that eternal kiss. And you go through your whole life with this longing for that encounter that took place before you were born. The Jews have a very interesting story, one of my favorites, that before you were born, the Lord had a meeting with you and told you about your mission and and an angel came and put his finger on your mouth and said, forget everything. And that's where this little gap comes from above your lip. And one of our biggest tasks in life is to connect with that moment that we forgot. We forget our pre-existence. And we need to get in touch with the mystery of this, this existence that I and you are an eternal being. And we've been made for an eternal, everlasting Father and the eternal life. It's interesting, the only definition of the eternal life that we have is in John 17 verse 3. Look what Jesus says. He says, now this is eternal life that they know you, the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is what Jesus calls the eternal, is to know the Father. And that is our second invitation today, the everlasting Father, the heart of the Father, to know that, that is everlasting life. That is true life and that is the life that is in Him and with Him. And for that, you need faith in him to know that he knows, he lives it, he has it, and he can give it, the Father. And Jesus says, you are entering into the kingdom, the glory of God, when you get to know him. You're going to the place where where you can start living under his rule and his government. That is life, and that is life in abundance. It's not something you just get at the end of your life when you die. It's something you're starting to experience now and you're growing in it because you're growing in the kingdom and the kingdom is growing in you. And if you die, then you go on with this life that you have already begun to taste. Jesus reveals the everlasting Father to us. He is the way to the Father. And when he prays, when he lives, when he speaks, he gives us these images, the picture, the the, the perspective of what a father really is and what this everlasting father is like. He uses such intimate words. Do you remember that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane? He uses very personal words for his father. He uses the word Abba. 
And when Jesus tells stories and parables, he describes God as an incredible, loving father. I think of Luke 15. We call it the story of the prodigal son. But I don't think that's correct. We make it about the prodigal son, that he's the hero of the story. But the actual hero of that story is the father who runs down the road to meet his lost son. That is the heart of the father. When we see Jesus touching a leper, we get to know the father, the touch of a father. When you see Jesus come to a woman who has made a mistake and he says to this woman, do, I do not condemn you. Go and do not sin again. That is the father. If you see Jesus weeping with Mary and Martha when Lazarus died, this is who the father is grieving and weeping with us in our sorrow and our pain. We see Jesus hanging on the cross, choking on his own blood, whispering forgiveness. He shows us who the everlasting father is. He shows us the heart of the father who gives himself to us. Jesus reveals the Abba heart of God, the eternal father. Can I ask you a question today and can I involve your heart in this now? Do you know the everlasting Father with your heart? Not just your head. You know, to know things and to know things are two different things. There's often this gap between our head and our heart. This great gap. You know, I can say with my head, I believe in God the Father. But here in my heart, it's, it's a different story. It's a different reality. When you know God is the everlasting Father in your heart, everything changes. When you know God in your heart as Father, you know that this is the Father's world and that I am always safe, even in a world of hijacking, crime, violence, viruses. I am safe because nothing can separate me from God, my Father, and Jesus Christ, not even death. Do I know this? Do you know the safety in your heart? When I know God in my heart as Father, I know that I am not an orphan in this universe. I am a beloved child of the everlasting Father. And all my feelings of unworthiness and rejection, they begin to heal because I know deep down that I am the Father's child. If I know the everlasting Father in my heart, I know I belong to a family. I am not alone. I belong to His family. When I experience God in my heart as Father, I know there's a reason for my existence. I'm not a mistake. Regardless of the circumstances of my birth, I'm not a mistake. I'm here for a reason, a purpose. I have a calling, a calling that comes from Him. Do you know the everlasting Father in your heart? Oh Lord, that is, that is our desire and that is our prayer that we can get to know you in our deepest, deepest, deepest parts. That our soul, that our longings for, for the everlasting, for you will be satisfied as we get to know you, as we follow you. And thank you, Jesus, that you come and show us who the Father is. And Lord, in this Christmas season where people feel, might feel far away from your Father heart in a very difficult year, Lord, Holy Spirit, come and open your heart, your Abba heart to us. Draw near to us, Lord. As a Father, come and love on us. Come and comfort us. Come and hold us. Come and be present to us. We need you. We need you as our Father, and we long for you. We love you, and we want to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the love of God, our everlasting Father, and the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, who shows us His Father heart, and the presence of his spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen.
I just want to remind you that there's now another opportunity just for you to give to the ministry in case you haven't done that yet. And the ways of giving will be on your screen. Thank you for joining us today. And I hope that this time, this season will be good, a good one for you and that you will experience the one that is called Everlasting Father close to you. Amen. Amen.